Hey folks, today we're gonna to take a look at two of my Fluval Flexes, the 15 gallon and the Mega Flex downstairs. It's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Pipe Tech, and today we're taking a look at the Fluval Flex 15 and uh, the Mega Flex downstairs. I'm doing an update on all my tanks and I'm kind of taking them a little bit more individual, uh, individually, but I thought I'd do these two at the same time just because, you know, they're, they're pretty similar tanks except for where they're not. <laughs> so this is my Fluval Flex 15. It's been, uh, it's been sort of customized in a way. I, of course, I've removed the top. I put a glass, uh, a piece of glass up here at the top uh, to serve as an impromptu lid. This lid has enabled me to use this Kessel light here to light it up. And um, this has been going, I, I want to say this is like a little over a year old. So the initial video for this was called the Blackwater Flex because in the beginning, I wanted to, do, uh, wanted to do a whole bunch of botanicals and really not a lot of plants and stuff. And then that obviously changed. <laughs> I've still been adding botanicals, but I, I didn't I, I didn't re-add as many botanicals to this as I went along. And uh, the plants have just been growing like crazy, especially with this big Kessel light on top of it. One plant in particular that's gone nuts is this, uh, the Cryptochore, uh, this Cryptochore Wendetti that I have in a number of tanks. Uh, it's been going crazy just up through there. It started off as like one small plant that's grown and grown and grown. I've actually pulled it out uh, several times. Uh, I've pulled out little branches that have gone out into here. I tried to leave a little bit of a clear space uh, on this corner where the fish can kind of come out. I usually feed them right here at the top corner and it kind of goes down. The Fluval Flex 15 is a really cool aquarium. It's a, it's a kind of a neat size. I love the shape of it. Um, and I'll, I like a lot of the way it does its filtration in the back and stuff. One thing I didn't like about the stock model was the light, although I've seen a lot of people do great things with the light that comes with it. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Sometimes you have a great deal of success with one particular way you do something and then the next time you go to try it, it doesn't work at all. There's a lot of variables um, that are between success and failure. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it could come down to how many water changes I did and uh, how well I was keeping it at that period of time. So that being said, this tank is going to be taken down. Uh, I have scratched the glass. I've got some major scratches that don't really show up a lot on film. Like I can still film this and it looks pretty, but uh, there's some stuff that I see on there that I don't like. And I'd really like to make room for a bigger aquarium. I'm probably going to take, rearrange some stuff in this room, maybe move this down a little bit, uh, the stand down, and maybe or maybe swap it with a 20 gallon and bring the 20 gallon a little bit further this way, bring that a little further that way. I'm going to swap this out with a 25 gallon tank that's uh it has the rear filtration that's really similar uh to this one and i'm going to take everything that's in this tank and i'm going to put it in there plant wise uh the fish will all probably be migrated to the 27 gallon downstairs the cube downstairs is actually pretty underpopulated it's uh doesn't have a lot, great deal of fish so i'll be putting the checkerboard cichlids and the green uh, neon tetras and uh, I guess there's a little uh, there's a little inler in there also as well as some snails and stuff I, I'll be putting them all downstairs in the in the 27 gallon cube and the reason I don't just automatically put them in the new tank is I'll be using a lot of um, I'll be using a lot of soil substrate uh, that's what I have to use and uh, it's uh, soil substrate tends to release ammonia when you first do it. So I, I hate to put fish in there, even though I'll have all this biological material to add to the new tank. Um, you know, basically the whole filter system for this one's going to go into there. But at least in the short term, I don't want to add, uh, I don't want to add any fish in. At the most, I'd want to do maybe one or two. I think it could probably be okay, but um, uh, at least in the initial couple of days, there won't be any fish in there while things kind of settle in. Then this tank will go on the shelf. I'll probably uh, sell it in the yard sale or something. I There's a video I'd like to do. Right now we're all keeping our distance from each other, but there's a video I'd like to do called Fish Store for a Day, where basically I post in all the local newspaper 
uh, articles or all the local fish group uh, areas that I'm selling off a, a whole bunch of fish gear and just set up sort of a fish yard sale outside. I've got so much stuff in my garage, like things I've tried and and uh, taken down and probably won't be putting up again and things I didn't really, I've got but I don't really want or, yeah, there's there's like this weird mixture of, of good stuff and junk and just stuff I'd like to replace with other things. So, yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun to do like a fish store for a day. As we move downstairs to the Megaflex, this has also been going good. I think I had a few fish pass away. Uh, I, I know my giant auto just stopped showing up one day and I'm pretty sure he went into the back and died somewhere where I couldn't see it. And uh, what happens a lot of times uh, with that is you've got this overabundance of nutrients and I started seeing hair algae. Hair algae is the bane of my existence that shows up on so many of my aquariums. I, I A lot of times I just kind of manually pull it out uh, a lot of times before I shoot a video, I'll be in there pulling it out, you know, by hand and and uh, just to make the tank look as good as it can. And usually it's not a tremendous problem. It's just kind of an annoyance. It'll be sort of on top of some plants in there. I find that most of my tanks, a lot of my older tanks, that eventually uh, the plants win. Uh, the nutrient level goes down enough to where the plants are eating, but there's nothing left over for algae. Uh, well, usually the plants are all rooted up and are ready to go. And then I maybe will just occasionally get a little bit more. This tank is approaching a year old. It's not, not quite a year old yet. But as it approaches its one year birthday, uh, it's started to have, finally have, you know, some problems that I typically see. And the big one for it right now is hair algae. I've got a lot of Amano shrimp in there to kind of help with that. Of course, I'm manually pulling that out. I'm uh, doing... Uh, I've increased my water changes on there slightly, especially since I'm home all the time. So I'm hoping to just kind of pull it out with a little bit of extra maintenance and uh, paying a little bit closer attention to it now that I'm looking at it all the time. The Megaflex has a crew of, uh, I've got I've just got a baby bristlenose, long fin bristlenose catfish. I've got a whole bunch of ember tetras. I've got a mono shrimp. I've got cherry shrimp. And just before the layoff started, I, uh, I bought a new little fish that I put in there. He's, uh, he's been kind of interesting to watch. I started noticing tons and tons of those detritus worms, uh, which for some reason the other fishes didn't need. So I put one in. Uh, I knew the Dario Dario had, was so successful at uh, clearing them out of, out of my tank up here that I decided to try one of its cousins, or you know maybe a, a related species, and see how he did. I no longer see those worms. I do see he or she out uh, quite often, and it's been an interesting species to observe. I don't think there's anything cuter than a baby bristlenose catfish. What's great is they, they grow really slowly. Uh, I do recommend them as an alternative to autosynclus. If uh, you typically get autosynclus catfish, uh, they don't tend to live very long uh, for me. I've had some last a really long time, but on average, usually when I get them, um, they just don't last very long. I just don't think they get enough of what they need to eat. Or they're small fish and maybe their lifespans are, are very short by the time I get to them. It's really difficult to see how old something is when it doesn't get very large, you know, even at a, at a full size. But I'd say overall, it's definitely my favorite of the flex tanks. If you're going to do a stock tank and not add lights to it or, or do anything else, I don't mind the closed off lid on that one because it's got two great lights and it's got a nice little door that opens up where you can feed the, feed the fish. It does a great job of keeping the condensation in there. It's got a lot of areas uh, to keep uh, a good amount of biological material, a lot of good ceramic or, or whatever you're using in there. It's got a bigger motor that doesn't seem to be as problematic as maybe the Flex motors. Uh, the Flex and the Spec both have the same, or the Flex 15 and like the Spec 16 have the same motor or, you know, pump in the back. And I've noticed it clogs up quite a lot. Like it's, uh, it's something that I have to maintain more than any of the other pumps that I have. It will eventually come apart, like uh, you can kind of, you pry it apart at the top, kind of get your fingernail wedged in there, and then you can pull it out, and it's got a sponge in there that sort of surrounds where the impeller is, and what you can do is just kind of rinse that out and clean it, and then it seems to run okay. 
But know that you're going to need to do that quite a lot. And if you got to pay attention to the amount of water flow you're getting because I started noticing in here, especially, and downstairs, that the pump seemed to be running, but I wasn't really getting much water through there. It was really um, a slow trickle of water. So that's kind of two criticisms for the stock Fluval Flex. One, that, that light that comes on it, for me, doesn't seem strong enough. And uh, the pump that's in the back needs to be cleaned a lot more often than I, than I have to do a lot of the other similar aquarium pumps. Neither of those knock it out. You know, uh, like I said, other people have done good job with that light. I've seen a lot of people do good stuff with that tank, uh, especially this fellow who said uh, his wife got him a Peck Tech shirt for his birthday. And he sent along a picture of him and his, his very nice looking Fluval Flex. Congratulations on doing such a great job with your aquarium and having a really smart wife that knows, uh, knows a good shirt when she sees one. <laughs> I've had a lot of people ask me about the noise level of the pump, both on this one and the Megaflex, and I haven't noticed them to be particularly noisy. But yes, I get the question quite often, uh, is this a noisy tank? Well, in my opinion, no. Uh, and the Megaflex downstairs, the same. I, I don't notice it very often, but it's right next to another huge aquarium, my 210, and that makes a lot of noise. So... I haven't had very many opportunities or very, there's not, one thing that doesn't happen a lot is the 210 being completely turned off and the other one running. Because usually I do a water change and I kind of go through there first and then I do the 210 last. But I can say I, I haven't, sitting next to it, I haven't ever noticed uh, the pump. And sitting next to this one, even this close, all I hear is the fan on the Kessel. So in your bedroom, we're in, it's going to be dark and quiet in there. Uh, you might hear it, but it it doesn't strike me as overly noisy, just like in a regular room. Your mileage may vary. Every pump's a little bit different, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, update on my Fluval Flexes, and I will be back real soon with an update on another set of aquariums. Big thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. And uh, if you want to know more about that, there's a link in the description. I'm doing some interesting things on there. I uh, can't wait to see more of you on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's been really fun talking to people, especially during these times we're all kind of locked up in here. Let's go crazy together. Until I see you again, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech and yeah, I'm an update. I'm doing an update on all my tanks through this week and next week. Um, I'm good. I'm hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech and today we're taking a look at the I think it was called the the Blackwater Flex because I in my <laughs> so I'm gonna probably put the uh, what. A, so I'm going to put the checkerboard cichlids uh, as it approaches its its, uh, its year. So that's two big criticisms, I guess. So that's two criticisms. Or they don't say anything at all. They just ask me if I think it, if I think, or the,